Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Ask to Train, Insider Tips for Knowledge Transfer Success by Terry Kozlowski. Uh, Terry brings a broad experience in a variety of client cultures where she led transformation and technology adoption projects to support the business and strategic decisions. Uh, during the decade, she served as an account manager, a project manager, a program manager, or an organizational change architect in more than 30 separate initiatives. Her industry experience includes government, nonprofit, and commercial settings, including healthcare, financial services, information technology, food and beverage, professional services, oil and gas, and manufacturing. She's made a major contribution to multiple ERP and other system implementations, strategic planning, and information technology outsourcing projects. She's a former partner at CSC Consulting, the Computer Sciences Corporation, an internationally recognized technology consulting firm, and at CSC as global leader of the Organizational Change Expert Group, she led a high-matrix virtual global team, including representatives from Europe and Australia to design and document new organizational change management framework methodology for all information technology projects across all CSC divisions. She's also used additional business process improvement or enterprise transformation uh, change, including ProSci and software development methodologies already adopted in client organizations. A graduate of Northeastern Illinois University, she's been an instructor and guest speaker in continuing education and degree programs offered through Northwestern, University of Georgia, uh, National Louis University, uh, the, the Institute for International Research, and the American Management Association. She's also been a trainer for PMI, the Practical Management Instruction Organization that's a, a subsidiary of ProCept USA for many years, a skilled trainer and interactive workshop leader. Her specialty is facilitating meetings of le leaders with divergent and strong opinions to reach the stated objectives. She's obtained over 20 additional certifications in employee selection, leadership and employee development, and executive coaching instruments and approaches. She's appeared on nationally syndicated television in uh, national newspapers, including the Chicago Tribune and the Wall Street Journal, uh, talking on topics such as workplace success. We're really pleased to have Terry join the call today on a topic that uh, is passionate to me and many others, which is how to be um, a better in instructor, how to transfer knowledge better to other staff. Terry, on the line? Yes, I am here. Thank you, Kevin. Great. I'm going to turn this over to you. Just quick instructions to everybody else. Everybody who's joining, thank you, more people are on. You're all on mute. Um, you're going to uh, watch the presentation, listen to Terry. During that presentation, if you have a question that comes up that you would like answered, type it into the questions window on your web interface, the questions window. This will allow you to sort of cache the questions, put them in the queue, and at the end of Terry's presentation, then we're going to take up the questions and she'll answer them. So as a place to save them so you don't forget them, just type them into the questions window. You also have the ability to type questions into the chat window. And at certain points during the presentation, uh, Terry is going to ask you to provide some feedback via the chat window. So the chat window is for the the, the Q&A that happens during the presentation, but the questions that you would like formally answered later on in the presentation, please enter those into the questions window and we'll hold those to the end. Terry, take it away. Great, thank you, Kevin. So uh, before we begin after that long introduction, I, I just want to say that the, the kinds of things that we're going to be talking about today are not applicable only to uh, technology uh, kinds of driven situations. Uh, this is applicable as, as, as life, um, you know, life lessons or, you know, life techniques and tools and tips that can be used in, you know, nonprofits and in, you know, working with your kids and, you know, in many other situations. So we'll go ahead and, and get moving. First, I'd like to know a little bit and draw from your own experiences in regards to training. So the first thing I would like you to do is to remember one of the best trainings that you've experienced as an adult. So pull into your mind a training that you remember as an adult that 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 impressed you or that or that you thought was valuable. And then in the chat window right now, if you would tell me what was it about that experience that made it the best? So you don't need to necessarily tell me about the specifics of what the actual situation was because that would probably be too much typing for you right now. But but just quickly, what were the things that made it 
a really good experience for you. If I can jump in, this is where people type into the chat window again. Yep. So, you know, maybe, you know, one thought, one comment, one thing that made it the best for you. Um, somebody typed a comment into the questions window. Um, that's where we're going to be saving questions till later on, but I'll just read it out because it was related to this. Okay. Um, somebody said a concise presentation, uh, something that was well structured, applicable to my current situation, intelligent, thoughtful. These are the comments people were typing in. Great, great. Thank you. Let's then look at the other side of that, which is remember one of the worst trainings you've experienced as an adult and identify what made that the worst or one of the worst. Again, please type your uh, comments into the chat window. So, Kevin, uh, responses that came in through the uh, question window this time as well? Um, actually, we had something come in through the question window again. Uh, the comment was, Dis, um, disorganized presenter, no logical progression. Ah, all right. Great. Well, uh, thanks uh, to those of you who shared those insights. What we're going to talk about in this session is some practical tips for when you need to train others as part of your job. So to that end, what kinds of topics are you currently training or do you anticipate that you might be training? Again, if you would type this into the chat window, this is an interactive program. So if you're multitasking, um, set some of those things aside and join us and give us your um, your uh, situation so that we can assist you more specifically. Uh, somebody commented that they can't see the chat window and they type that into the questions window. So that's fine. Just type it in the questions window if that's all you got. Yeah, wherever, wherever we can get wherever it you can. visible. Um, Kevin, is there a way to make the chat window visible? Uh, I can't control it on people's screens. It should okay. be visible, but I can't control that. All right. Okay. Well, again, if the, if it's coming into the chat window, what uh, what do we see so far? Uh, nothing yet. Okay. People are a little shy today. Well. Uh, one person, uh, Tina, says, introducing policies. Ah, policies. Okay. Something very exciting, I'm sure, for all the participants. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk about, uh, you know, ways to, ways to liven that up today. So let's, let's keep moving on. Uh, we're going to talk about seven principles of effective adult learning. And we're also going to share six popular methods. And we're going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of, of each of those methods that you may use. And when you stay to the end. Another, another comment yeah. came in. Somebody says, uh -huh. um, train on PM processes specific to company and in general as well. Have trained on various areas of project management. This came from Ann. Okay, great. Thanks, Ann. All right. And again, as, as we're proceeding, as you identify areas that you want to um, uh, uh, include, go ahead and type them into your chat window or into uh, the question window, whatever is available to you um, as, as we're going along. 
Um, when you say to the end, we'll confirm the single most powerful technique you can use to ensure that they've actually learned what you intended, right? It's nothing worse than teaching and wondering, well, did they actually reach what it was I was hoping that they would get from uh, this, this uh, training experience I have settled, settled for them? So in terms of, of what's in it for you, what are the ways that you would benefit if you were being recognized as being a good, and again, depending on your situation, you know, a good trainer, a good instructor, a good teacher, a good tutor, or a good mentor, a good guide, you know, perhaps just someone who is acknowledged within your own organization as someone that is a um, skilled at imparting knowledge and wisdom uh, to others. What 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 are the ways that you would benefit? Again, uh, if you would type into the chat window or into the question window, one thing that uh, would be a potential uh, benefit to you. And while people are typing, some of the things that I have heard um, in prior uh, times when I've asked this question is that it's it's good for their career. Um, you know, it's good uh, it's good visibility. It's good to be you know acknowledged as as a resource that people trust and rely on. There is a there is a you know a sense that when you are effective at developing others that that uh, also helps your own career advancement and progression because that's one of the key skills that they look for in future leaders is how are they not just at doing the work themselves but at helping others to become even more effective and more valuable to the organizations so those are those are some of the things we have we have already heard uh, Kevin Someone anything typed, new that came in yeah somebody typed respect respect yeah, and somebody put in dollar signs, so I'm guessing more money. <laughs> <laughs> dollar signs, more money, absolutely. All true, all true. So let's talk a little bit about how adults learn. And if we're talking about learning, let's let's start quickly just by defining, well, what do we mean by learning? So if we take just a very simple definition, we say, well, this is the acquisition of knowledge or skills, and that can be coming either through experience or study or by being taught by someone. Most of us have experiences with learning based upon when we were children or when our children uh, are, are in school. And the techniques that are used um, or have been used, obviously there are some you know, more progressive um, you know, schools and educational organizations that use different techniques, but sometimes some of the ones that we may have experienced are not always the most effective when actually working with um, uh, with adults. So we're going to talk about principles of adult learning. This was based upon some research that was done by the Canadian Literacy and Learning Network. And the first one is that adults learn when they're internally motivated. So, you know, kids may need to sit in class because they're told that they have to. Um, perhaps they don't always do that, but, but you know, adults definitely need uh, within themselves to want to uh, be there and want to learn. Adults generally want to learn for practical reasons. Um, adults generally want to learn by doing in terms of active participation. Um, adults generally are not comfortable with, you know, people talking at them. Uh, they want to actually be in it themselves. Adult learners like finding solutions to realistic problems. So things that are theoretical or that they don't believe bears any relevance to their situation or the problems that they face uh, would be, uh, again, uh, you know, a, a difference in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, adult learners. Adult learning is affected by their experience. 
again, adults bring experience and prior uh, life experience as well as their uh, exposure to perhaps things that are in agreement or in disagreement with may you what with what you may want to be sharing with them, and that needs to be taken into account when you're working with them. Adults prefer to learn what they feel they need to know. Again, most adults will find a way. They may be sitting there or they may be online, but you know, if they're not uh, thinking that this is something that's going to be um, valuable and something that is directly relevant to them, um, they will tune out. You know, they may be physically there, but they're not necessarily going to be actually engaging in learning actively what it is that you want to share with them. And then the last one is adults generally want information to help them improve their situation or that of their children. So those are what the seven uh, uh, key um, lessons in regards to adult learning that we have you know, shared quickly. Let's take a quick look at these and in the chat window or in the question window, whatever you have available to you, how have we already attempted to apply some of these same principles just in the time that we've spent together so far? Just waiting for somebody to type in some comments. Yeah. What were the kinds of questions that were posed or what were the topics that we discussed that connected to some of the things that were here? And as people are typing, you know, certainly we asked you first about your experiences with training, right, at the beginning. We also identified uh, some of the ways that uh, what was in it for you in regards to practical reasons why you would benefit uh, through participating. Um, we're, we're, we're asking for active participation in terms of the doing through the chat window and the, uh, and the question for, um, uh, format. Um, and our intention is certainly that we help through the things that we're discussing today to help you improve your situation in terms of becoming more a more effective trainer. Anything new that came in, Kevin? Yeah, Anne said, Terry asked questions about what we want, past experiences, and made us participate. Okay. So again, just because these are principles doesn't mean that you can't, uh, you know, not apply them on the fly. So we're going to look now at some of the popular instructional methods. We said that there were six of them. And we're going to be looking at the advantages and the disadvantages as we go. So let's talk about how to consider these before we even look at the six in terms of you know, how, how do you know which is the right uh, method potentially for your situation? The first question you want to ask yourself is, what is the learning outcome that you want to produce? And if we're talking about what the heck is a learning outcome, another way to think about it is, what do I want them to know, understand, or feel as a result of going through whatever method that you apply? And another question is, do you actually want them to develop skills? Is there something that you want them to be able to do as a result of what it is that you choose as your, as your learning method? So that's the first question you want to ask yourself. At the end of it, when they walk out or leave you or walk away from your desk, what is it that's that change that you want them to have? Is it something in terms of something they can tangibly do, or is it a change in their attitude or their behavior? So that's the first question you want to ask yourself. The next question you want to ask yourself is, 
what is the level of the expertise of your participants? Now, I'm saying this as if it's a group, but obviously anything that we're talking about as a group also works whether you're working one-on-one -on -one with someone. So are they arriving with a necessary background for a particular method or strategy you might take in terms of your instructional method? Or will you need to provide more uh, for them because they're not necessarily bringing uh, the experience that might allow you to use perhaps other methods. And then the third question you want to ask yourself as you're thinking about the particular advantages and disadvantages for you for the methods that we're going to look at is what useful learnings can be produced in the time available? Um, and, and time available is actually two aspects. One is the time that you actually have them but it's also your time for preparation in advance, right? Because sometimes you may just need to pull something together relatively quickly based upon the um, time constraints that you have to work with in order to accomplish what your outcome is. So that may factor in terms of, of the choice of the strategy that you use. So let's take a look at each one of them. The first one is probably the one that is most familiar to us, and that's the lecture method, where the teacher possesses the information or knowledge which does not necessarily exist within the group. And now in a lecture method, you can use participation exercises, discussions, questions and answers, demonstrations, visual aids, role playing. You may use a lot of involvement techniques, but the basic flow of information is from the instructor to the participants. So that's the lecture method. The panel is where you have a group of experts and they present different aspects of a topic or they debate an issue. So in this one, the instructor has a predetermined learning outcome controlled by the questions participants should be able to answer after the presentation, but a lot of it is actually in the hands of getting the right people in the room and allowing the experts to bring up the um, the topics and the issues and you know provide their you know their recommendation and guidance uh, in, in in terms of of, uh, of the of the audience so the information flows initially from the panel to the participants but if you were using this method you would definitely then want to make sure that you had some sort of question and answer session or discussion or something where the participants would be able to um, share with each other. Third method is a seminar. Again, most people are familiar with this one. Participants are all expert in some aspect of the subject, either from experience, professional preparation, or intensively focused study. In this method, the class itself become the experts. So they're not listening or watching a group of experts. They are act each individually experts themselves. And in this one, it's not so much that there are predetermined outcomes, but the instructor will guide the areas of investigation and discussion through, you know, questions, assignments for outside study, and fostering exchanges among the participants. A lot of times you'll find college graduate programs, you know, use this method very heavily because they're asking people to bring that level of participation and involvement and expertise and share with each other. The fourth method is experiential. And what is an experiential one? Basically, it's another way of saying it's an experience, meaning you put participants either into an exercise or a situation or you have the role play or you have some sort of game where the experience itself is what teaches them something. And you do this because you want to change their understanding or you want to change their attitude or you want to change the way they see things. But you want to do it not by telling them about it, but by having them go through it and do it themselves in terms of an experience. So again, the instructor here does have specific learning outcomes in mind because they design the experience and the questions that the participants answer um, 
or you know in in a group discussion afterwards in order to bring those points out one of the ways that i've seen this used a lot is that uh in teamwork and in team building kinds of topics right where you put everybody in a group and you give them maybe different puzzle pieces but you you know set some rules or restrictions regarding you know what people are allowed to do or not allowed to do and part of the experience highlights the fact that it required people being able to communicate more effectively in order to solve the puzzle um, across all of the people because not any one individual had all of their own puzzle pieces. It actually required cooperation. So, you know, that's that's one example of an, you know, experiential approach where you come up with something that allows people to experience for themselves what it is that you want them to walk away with in terms of the key learning or the uh, or the change in the attitude. The discussional method is one where the teacher has the information or knowledge to get across to the group, but believes that a lot of it already exists or there's enough background in bits and pieces within the group that it can be pulled out of the group. So in this one, the instructor may utilize brief lecture demonstrations or summaries or visual aids or one-way communication techniques, but the basic flow of the pertinent information is from the participants to the other participants through the stimulated discussion. So today in this webinar, we're attempting to use a discussional method approach to the extent that we are able to, given the webinar format and the fact that we don't have all of the people that are able to be face to face in the same room and able to hear each other voice to voice. The sixth method is guided learning by doing. And in this one, the teacher has to impart not only the understanding, but also skill to group members. In this case, the instructor believes that skill can come from first watching a demonstration, in terms of having the participant seeing how it is done properly, and then having the participant do it themselves. Now, the information flow here is multifaceted because depending on who does the demonstration, it could be the instructor demonstrating to the participants. It could also be one of the participants in the room doing the demonstration. And then you would have, after each participant attempts to do it themselves, you would have the participants to each other because as one is doing it, the other would be observing or critiquing, um, you know, the performance. And the participant to themselves in terms of if they were demonstrating it and talking about what their performance steps were that they were doing as they were executing it as well as through um, self-critique and self-correction of errors. So, if we recap the six instructional methods that we were talking about, let's talk for a moment about what it is that you see for yourself as being methods that you might potentially be able to use in terms of the topics that you are teaching or the situations that you may be in where you could actually apply some of these that you may not have done as of yet. So in the chat window or in the questions window, whichever is available to you, uh, just uh, write, write a brief comment in terms of what you see as uh, a, one of these that you might be able to, um, to use yourself. And while people are some input here. Yeah, yeah. And while people are doing that, you know, let's talk a little bit about each of them in terms of, you know, the lecture method is probably the most popular in terms of practice. 
but unless you use a lot of involvement techniques, um, it's m perhaps one of the least effective because it's most removed in terms of people as particularly adults actually doing themselves or being able to, you know, assimilate the, you know, the knowledge, the information themselves. It's easier to, um, um, uh, you know, tune out. Uh, during a lecture than it is during some of these other uh, some of these other pieces the you know the advantage of a panel is that people get to hear multiple points of view um, but one of the disadvantages is that you cannot always get uh, necessary panelists or have the time to be able to you know cover what you need to cover in terms of that situation same thing with the seminar the seminar oops hit the wrong button let's go back um, during the uh, during the seminar uh, you uh, may not be able to have uh, all the participants that actually have a lot of experience and expertise to bear or the outside time in order to be able to um, do the homework so to speak in order to bring the expertise into that situation so that's one that again requires uh, uh, not only the uh, the right level of experience in terms of the participants but also the the level of uh, of of time that that's appropriate for that sort of approach we, we do have some input here if you'd like to right. hear what the, yeah, the group said absolutely. Mm -hmm. so uh, um, Anne said usually she uses lecture several other methods require specialized skills in instructional design An interesting to know what some of those other things are that require skills in instructional design so maybe so what, Anne can type a little bit more about that. Sure. While she's responding to that, Tina said she uses experiential. Seeing is believing with an exclamation point. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Uh, none other one none others yet. None yet. Okay. And again, people people may still be writing, so just you know, pop in when you hear them. The, you know, t Tina's point about the experiential seeing is believing is is so true, because if people experience it for themselves, then um, that's not something that you have to worry about them forgetting uh, the, the as quickly. You know, the same way with some of those other methods, right? It's it's something that tends to be, you know, much more lasting in terms of the impact on people. The same is true for that guided learning by doing. You know, uh, you, you know, you you may get into it by you know demonstrating it yourself or have someone else demonstrate it, but if people are able to do it themselves that again is part of that experience you know it's that old adage you know tell me and I'll forget or you know uh, you know show me and I might remember but if I do it myself you know that I've got it so you know clearly the experiential and the guided learning by doing are um, options when you have the ability to do the planning in order to be able to make sure that you have all of the things that you need in order to um, uh, accomplish that. Obviously, all of these require preparation, but those two generally will require a little bit more preparation. The discussional method is one that even if you're used to lecture as your strategy, is one that can be incorporated relatively easily and quickly because all it requires is for you to pre-plan in advance and or on the fly, make sure that you pose questions periodically in terms of what you are covering in order to identify what the participants 
you know, both understand and believe or perhaps where they may disagree with you or have a different approach or a different strategy. You know, particularly in the, you know, project management realm, uh, people have uh, very strong opinions regarding the right way to do something or the best way to do something. So being able to bring those topics out and asking for that input from people uh, as opposed to merely saying this is the way we're going to do it, um, you know, is, is, is certainly a and, and a, an effective strategy. Anything else that anyone has added, Kevin? Uh, not a, oh, there's one more. Uh, a, so this was from Anne again. She provided more detail. Uh -huh. She said, adult learning specialists design seminar and discussion programs and know how to ask the questions how much time to assign to exercises, give guidance on flow of the instruction over several hours. Ah, okay. Um, and actually, we'll, we'll be talking about um, some of the specific, you know, learnings and techniques and strategies that can be used to accomplish that yourself in, in just, a, just a few moments. So what we had planned to cover today was to give you some practical tips. Um, we covered the seven principles of effective adult learning, and we talked about some of the most popular methods and the advantages and disadvantages of each of those. So as Anne said, you know, instructional designers can provide that kind of specific input in regards to that, but there's also a way that you can learn to do it yourself. So um, there is a one-day training in-person program that is being offered that will help you to further grow your skills in being an effective trainer, um, we'll cover a lot of content. Um, I will be teaching this myself. Um, and it's not just a come and learn some more interesting techniques and strategies. You actually get to demonstrate uh, by uh, your designing and then presenting short training segments that you deliver during the course of this actual day. So this will be in Canada, in Toronto, on May 14th. Um, Kevin, you want to uh, make a comment about uh, this event? Uh, sure. This um, uh, we're going to be sending out the uh, the link to everybody, uh, so we'll send the uh, the URL in the email, so you can just click it, so it's clickable to the people who attended the call. Um, there's early bird discounts available if you book soon. You can get a savings off the uh, the booking of the event. Catering and everything will be provided during the one day session. But what's really interesting is it's it's not just a course, it's also a chance, as uh, Terry said, to practice these educational delivery skills, these knowledge transfer skills. So you learn some stuff and you get to practice it. And uh, so you come back, not just with the knowledge, but the, the experience of having actually done it. And as uh, Terry said earlier, sometimes doing something is far more powerful in terms of your, your growth as a person than just hearing about it or watching it. So, you know, some of, some of the topics that we cover in terms of some of the additional things that you would be learning would be, um, you know, three learning stages to guide your actions as you are, you know, preparing. We cover um, uh, seven specific techniques that you can use to make your lectures interactive and the, you know, the do's and the don'ts and the tricks and the downfalls in terms of, of you know, when to apply them and when not to apply them. We also have you um, learn how to complete your own two-part plan for your own instructional topic. So we encourage you to bring your own information into the class because you'll be working on your own information. It won't be a, you know, a case study of somebody else's situation. You'll actually be working on your own stuff and uh, identifying potential questions, as Anne pointed out, uh, of that you can use for your own instructional topic. Uh, in terms of your practice. And we also cover uh, at the end of it, um, uh, provide you some reference materials in terms of, you know, how to start your training program in terms of, uh, you know, ice breaking techniques and how to, how to create a, a positive motivation 
motivational environment, how to prepare yourself before you train, as well as how to maintain a positive and motivated class through addressing potential problem situations. So a lot of times people are concerned, well, what do I do if they say this? Or what if they ask me a question and I have the answer? Or what do I do about, you know, somebody who won't shut up? <laughs> you know, what you know, we cover also all of the most common fears and worries uh, that people have in regards to training and give you practical tips and strategies for how to address that. So we really managed to pack quite a lot into, into one day uh, in terms of, of this experience. So that will be, I believe, this particular session that we're talking about right now is in Toronto on May 14th. And uh, as Kevin said, you'll you'll be receiving you know some additional information on this. If you're watching the recording and May 14th has already passed, um, we'll provide information for how you can uh, get information when this will be offered again. Or if you want us to bring this into your own organization and uh, um, uh, you, uh, share this with uh, multiple people, you know that's something that we can also obviously provide information on as well. Yeah, so if people are watching this on the recording, and as you said, May 14th, 2018 is gone, um, has passed, they can still uh, follow up with us on the information that will be provided at the end of the video on how to contact us to find out when the upcoming dates will be. So now we had promised that we would share the single most powerful technique that you can use to ensure they have actually learned what you intended. And you probably could already guess what it is based upon our extensive use of it in this session. So in the chat window or in the question box, identify what you believe we would say is the single most powerful technique that you will use in terms of your um, learning and your um, uh, knowledge transfer activities. Now this will be interesting to see if anybody gets it right. <laughs> Come on, type your type your guesses into the box. Yeah, you see, you know, Kevin, people don't want to be wrong. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's okay. There, okay. There's probably more than first, one right answer. <laughs> first one in is Diane, who said guided learning. Guided learning, okay. Next one is Anne who said, ask for feedback or participation. Yes. Let's see if we can get a couple more. Any more? And act actually, those, those are all good answers because, in fact, those are all techniques and strategies that you can use to make sure that they've actually learned what you intended. Okay, let's just give, give, it, give it a chance. So two more, if we can get two more. How about if I sweeten the deal? Go ahead, um, Kevin. Yeah, so let's let's get a cut to, to get us a few more responses. What I'll do is if somebody gets it right, or if nobody or more than one person gets it right, we'll do a draw. I'll just randomly pick one. We're gonna send you a fifty dollar Amazon gift certificate. Woo! -hoo! So let's see if that gets a couple more responses. So to give you just another minute to type in what you think the single most powerful technique is to ensure people have actually learned what was taught. So we've got two entries already. Yeah, and this is tough, Kevin, because those and that actually doesn't stop are, the people who are, are who... correct entries too. I mean, they're not <laughs> they're not the official one, but they're they're valid. They're they're. <laughs> so those who've guessed can already can still guess again too. That'll give you extra chances here. Um, okay, we got another one. Uh, Tina put in a vote. She said uh, a pre-presentation and post-presentation questioning, questioning session. Yes, also true. I think I know the answer, but I don't think I qualify. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not eligible for that fifty dollar gift card, Kevin. <laughs> Diane Diane says discussional. Ah, okay. Uh, Joanne you know, Kevin, says in, Joanne says interactive participation. 
Kevin, these are all right answers. I think you're going to have to go to a drawing among the all of the entrants. So is that all five people have responded, uh, have, have given one, two, three, four? No, one person gave me two. two. So that's four people have responded, one, and one of them responded twice. <laughs> so I, I, should, I should give her two chances in the draw, right? Well, I don't know that we're going to give her two chances in the draw, but... Um, okay, I have, I have randomly ordered the names. Okay. So, Terry, you pick a number from one to five. Oh my gosh, I don't even have any visibility to it. So, you know, I would get, let's go with, uh, you've, you've randomly organized them, right? So we don't know yeah. who was which or anything, yep. right? In terms well, of I do, but you don't, you don't know. I don't know. Okay, yeah. all right. Then, we'll then I think we would go with number five. Two, three, four. That is Anne. Anne, you've won a $50 Amazon gift certificate. We have your email address, and we'll make sure we send that to you. So congratulations, Anne. <laughs> congratulations, Anne. And now for the official answer. The hook symbolizes what powerful technique? And you may notice that that hook is actually an upside-down question mark. So you were all right in that all of your answers reflected the fact that you are getting through whatever method you were using, whether it was the learning by doing or by the pre and post questioning, you are getting that interaction in which you actually know um, through your, um, you know, your, your conversation with your participant, you know, what they have and what they don't have. So, so uh, again, even if you're using the lecture technique, throw in questions, throw in a question at the beginning, throw in questions in the middle, throw in questions every time you shift topics, throw in um, that back and forth interaction. You know, it on, on webinars, most people are, are um, not as uh, prone to participate as they would be if you were face to face in some other kinds of settings. So, you know, remember to use your questions in order to help people to interact and to, um, uh, you know, be, be connected and stay engaged and to allow you to identify where perhaps their understanding is a little off or where they got the key points, but maybe there are some nuances that now you can talk about, or maybe they missed some of the major learning outcomes that you wanted them to have, and so you kind of need to go back to the drawing board and come back at it. But that actually reminds us that we are now, Kevin, at the question and answer session of the uh, today's program. So. Are, have people also submitted questions? And if you have not yet submitted a question, I mean, clearly there was uh, a, 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 an area and a field here that is huge in terms of, of us talking about it. So what additional questions do you have that we can cover in our remaining time today? Okay, everybody, this is your chance to get the most you can out of this presentation by getting your own individual questions asked. Uh, we have a chat or a question window. If you have something you would like Terry to ask on the topic of how to do better knowledge transfer, uh, please type your question now in the, uh, in the question window that you've been using so effectively, uh, and we'll get her to, uh, to address those questions. We still have a little bit of time. Consider this uh, free consulting. <laughs> yeah. And the, the people who had identified some of their specific situation in terms of the, the you know, the topics that they're covering or want to cover, so, you know, so a question, a question a came in. They, yeah. yeah, a question came in. Somebody asked, does this apply to non-training knowledge transfer? I'm not sure what that means. I guess that's if you're working with side by side with a colleague and trying to, you know, Get, get some information over them, not a formal training session. Yeah, they, they can, you know, update um, their question with some clarification while, while we're talking. But yes, actually, these techniques work often even more effectively uh, when you are working one-on-one -on -one more informally with people. They clarified by saying, like peer coaching. 
Ah, like peer coaching, exactly. So, so one of the um, one of the 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 principles that you can apply and use is um, if if you are peer coaching, is this someone that has requested help or coaching in regards to a particular topic, or is this unsolicited feedback that you're attempting to give someone? Let's make make sure we understand what kind of situation we're talking about. Is, is is that your answer, or are you asking? No, the a que question? it's a question. Are, are are we talking about somebody that has asked you to help them with something, or are you talking about you have a peer who is doing something wrong, or that you want to provide some feedback and guidance to? Because the strategy that you would do in each of those situations is a little bit different. Yeah, he typed in information. He typed in a little bit more clarity. He typed in a sentence. He said, "I'm going on vacation. I have to provide knowledge transfer to one of my colleagues to take over the activities and projects that I was working on." Um, he said, "This is not formal training, but I still need to transfer knowledge. Would these techniques still apply?" Absolutely. So, so what you could do, and and I'm sorry, what was the first name of the person that asked that? Brian. Brian. So, Brian, what what you could do is, first of all, obviously, you've identified or come up with a list of the things that you want them to take over for you on, right? So, so you could start by, you know, sitting down with them with that list and asking them, you know, what do you already know about where we stand on, you know, whatever it is that you, that your pieces are, right? Or, or if if you think that that's you know too broad a question then you could say um, you know let's talk about what I'll need you to do in regards to project X you know now if they have I'm assuming they have some familiarity with it because otherwise you wouldn't be asking them to take over but if even if they don't you could ask them you know, do you have any concerns about things that you think might come up while I'm gone in regards to X, Y, and Z, right? Um, so, you know, allow them to identify if they have any areas that they, you know, definitely want to, you know, get some guidance, you know, on in particular. Or if you think that you know something that might come up, you could ask them, you could, you could say, you know, would it be helpful for me to cover with you what I think are the most likely situations you would face? Or, you know, what are the most likely questions you'll get? Or, you know, where, where the problem areas are or something. There's something about asking permission to give coaching that's really powerful in terms of, you know, would you like me to tell you where I think the landmines might be in these three projects while I'm out? You know, would that be helpful to you? So then, and again, I'm, you know, using this as a project example, but really it applies to anything, right? If someone comes to you or even if someone hasn't come to you and, you know, something's going wrong, uh, you know, like I, I have walked up to a facilitator um, privately on break and said, you know, would you like um, some feedback on what would make the next part of the session go a little bit more smoothly? Or, you know, whatever it was that I was, you know, w that was going on, right? And if they say no, then you walk away, right? But if they say yes, because you've positioned it as something that's a benefit to them in terms of you're offering some assistance in an area, but it's an offer. You're not just arrogantly walking up and telling them that they're doing something wrong. Then you could pose your suggestion in the form of a question. So, you, you know, you could then say, you know, have you considered giving people individual post-it notes when you pose a question so that they can write their answers on the post-it notes and then collect them and put them all up on the flip chart rather than having one person dominate uh, the conversation, you know, every time you ask a question? Um, so if you ask them if they'd consider doing that in terms of whatever the technique or strategy is, then they can apply it or not apply it, but you've you've prepositioned it that, you know, are they willing to take some coaching or, you know, are they open to a suggestion for something that will be a benefit to them in terms of something that they're trying to do? 
So long, long answer. Hopefully that was that was relevant to you, Brian. Excellent. Uh, any other questions? Please type them into the question window. We've got maybe time for one, maybe two more questions. So now's your chance. Just type in your uh, your individual personal questions in the questions window, and we'll get Terry to answer them. Looks like there's no further questions forthcoming. So maybe we can wrap this up a couple minutes early. Yeah. Terry, I want to thank you very, very much for your time on this. This was fascinating to learn about these uh, techniques and uh, some of the insider tips that you've collected along the years. Uh, I'm, I just want to remind people about that one-day workshop in Toronto if they're uh, interested in getting face-to-face -face with Terry and diving a lot deeper into these topics. Um, you're welcome to uh, to sign up and join. We're going to be sending out an email to everybody thanking them, along with a link to the uh, the recording of this if they want to watch it again later, as well as uh, information on uh, how to get access to more information about that uh, that course in in May. Uh, thank you again, Terry. Thank you, Kevin, and thanks to everyone. Your your time is the most precious commodity these days, so I am very appreciative of your having uh, shared it with us for this past hour.